Hey guys, what's up? I am back and today we're going to be talking about the best VR tour software available right now. This is a subject that a lot of people ask about. Uh, there is a lot of interest in creating VR tours. I did um, some content about it last year and obviously due to the pandemic and the increased popularity of VR headsets and virtual uh, 360 cameras, everything, a lot of people are creating VR tours and there is a lot of software out there. I'm going to go through the best ones available right now. I'm going to give you some free examples along with some paid examples. I'm going to show you what the uh, capabilities are, how much they cost. We're going to go through each one and see what they can do. So if you're looking to start creating virtual tours and you want to know what kind of software is available, stay tuned because that is what we're going to be getting into right now. Okay guys, let's start looking at some VR tour software options. First, I'm gonna start with a couple of free options. Now these probably won't be good enough for any professional use, but they do have their place. These are more for if you wanna practice or if you just want somewhere to upload your 360 photos, maybe just to share with friends, family, etc. There are a few options available. So let's start by looking at Orbix 360, which is what I'm looking at right here. This is a free VR tour software. They do have a paid option, but to be honest, I think the free one is good enough. It does allow you to do quite a lot of stuff um, for free. You can create unlimited tours. You do have to upload five images at a time. So for very large tours, it may take a while, but let's just take a look at the options. Here, there um, are quite a few options. I have created, uploaded a VR tour right here, just as an example, just in a small flat. So as you can see, we have some um, directional options to um, take us to different rooms and that is set up here with the navigation hotspots. Um, you can also change the titles, you can add sound, you can add information hotspots. So um, yeah, there's quite a lot of options here. So let's just try one of these options. Let's just try and add an image into the, uh, into the VR tour here. So we just upload select the image we want and there we go the image is uploaded and we can move it around if we want there we go let's sit him down there there's not very many customization options there's not in much in the way of extra features different stylings uh, making it personal i mean it all seems to be pretty much just the same option it's all going to be quite basic and bland but for a free option i think it's quite good as you can see here, it's free. This is the uh, membership options, the pricing options, and it's eight pounds twenty. Oh no, not pounds. And it's eight dollars twenty-five a month for the main uh, for the paid option. And with that, you get your customizations. You get uh, you're able to link back. So this is what really is required for a professional service. You don't want the company's branding. Um, but yeah, it's pretty much the same. Otherwise, I would um, recommend checking that out if you want a practice run or you want something that's free just to upload your uh, 360 tours. Let's move on now to Clap T, I believe it's called. This is another free option. Um, again, another online VR tour creator. They do have a paid option as well, but this is another software, another online software that has quite a, uh, a advanced free option where at least it has basically all the things you need to create a basic VR tour. Now, again, I've uploaded another one here just as an example. And essentially what you're limited to doing is to create the hotspots to move in between each room or each VR tour, each 360 photo, just drag and drop, and then you just select the appropriate image and then it will be linked together. There we go. Um, so let's just do another one into the bedroom. And I look quite like the animation. Um, it seems really smooth. It seems quite modern. However, again, there's a lack of customization. This is basically the only thing you can do. It's the only visual option you have. In other VR tours that you pay for, you're going to have a lot more options available to you. When adding information hotspots, just drag and drop that eye symbol and you'll be able to add text, you'll be able to add images. But for now, let's just take a look at the preview. What I will say is that Clapty doesn't seem to reduce the image quality too much. A lot of free VR tour softwares uh, reduce the quality just to, I guess, lower the bandwidth. But for me, it seems to be exactly the same quality as the other places I've uploaded this particular tour. I also like how it kind of smooths in between each panorama rather than just jumping it. And for a basic VR tour, I think it looks quite good. 
The next free VR tour software we're gonna look at is Kula. This is my preferred free option for creating VR tours. I've used Kula for a long time, basically since they uh, were created, uh, I think about four years ago now, and it has so many options compared to the other options I've just shown you. I actually have a pro account with Kula. I'm gonna also include this in the pro options that I'm gonna talk about later, but I'll just talk about what you can do with the free version of the VR tour software. Again, this is an online service uh, but what you get for the free account is actually quite amazing you can do so much with it so I created this VR tour I think a couple like about three years ago now when I had a free version of Kula and yeah let's just take a look at what we can do and if we go um, onto the edit tab you'll basically see everything um, that is pro that you need to pay for has a little pro sign here so you see the audio is um, a pro feature but everything else you get with the free option most of the pro features of Kula are more to do with um, how you embed how you can customize how, how you can remove logos add your own add your own company's uh, personalized logo that kind of stuff so we'll talk about that later so these are hotspots that I've added to take uh, to other other areas of the tour but as you can see, we can change them to have many, many different visual options. And they also have, oh no, don't move Bernie. You can even edit the appearance of your photos. There are filters available. I wouldn't recommend using filters really, um, unless you are desperate to improve the quality, you should really do that um, in when you're editing your photos in Photoshop or something. But you know, you can add sharpness a little bit like HDR. Um, so we can change the appearance you can there's level correction, which is a, an advanced feature usually only found in paid programs. You can limit how much people can zoom in, zoom out, how, how much people can look up and down. If you wanted to hide something like this, you could limit so that you could only um, look down to about this level, which is fine. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff you can do with Cooler, which is really, really impressive to me. So that is pretty much the free options available, or at least the good ones. Um, there are some other software is available but I just don't think they're worth looking at and there has been some changes over the past couple of years for example Theasis I think it's called Theasis that was a popular free VR tour creator however they have changed now um, you can only upload five panoramas per account with the free account which is basically useless um, if you want to actually use the good features it's $19.99 a month which is quite expensive to be honest there was also Google tour creator however that is about to be discontinued as you can see here up until June 30th 2021 it's not going to be um, existing anymore they're going to take it away also Veer uh, this was a you could also create VR tours here but now they only do videos they don't do 360 photos so that is something we need to consider when choosing a virtual tour creator because some of them have ceased to exist some of them stop working some of them are abandoned and people lose their content so part of choosing a VR tour software Software to stick with is one that is um, going to stick around, one that's doing well, one that has a lot of established users that, that's not going to disappear. And ideally, you'd like a service that allows you to download the tours offline to use so that you can always save them and you're not going to lose all of your photos and all of your tours. So that is something we'll consider as we go through into the paid options, which we're going to start here with the Rico 360 tours. I actually did a video on this in my last video i um, trying it out because i do think it's a really awesome option for real estate virtual tours for creating virtual tours um, for housing listings mostly because of how easy it is to use how easy the workflow is and how this software can automatically create a vr tour real estate listing basically within about 10 minutes so this is an entirely mobile based software you download the rico theta tours app and then you start shooting you connect to your rico theta camera start shooting the tours in whichever location you're shooting it will automatically create the tour in the app you can link them together you can create hotspots you can add 2d images you can add information hot points uh, you can add a floor plan if you have one you can geolocate your images to so that it appears on google maps 
And once you've created this, once you've done all your shooting, once you've linked it all together, you get a VR listing ready to go. Once you do the paid option, you can remove the um, you can remove the Rico branding. You can add your own branding. You can add your own information about the listing. So it basically is a really awesome tool for real estate agents. If you want something that's fairly cheap, fairly easy to use, you don't need the, all of the super advanced features. This is definitely something to look at. It does have its limitations. There's not very much customization. There's not very much in the way of animations. Other types of advanced features like horizon corrections, like adding um, animations, like adding video. You can't really do any of that. It is limited also to a mobile app. So, you know, there's obviously limitations what you can do with that. But for ease of use, it is probably the easiest one to use to create VR tour listings. Also, the sync up with the camera only works with Ricoh's cameras. So that's the Ricoh Theta Z1 or the Ricoh Theta V or one of the other um, options it has. There's about three or four cameras it works with. So you are limited to using those cameras, which do have uh, limitations in terms of quality. But overall, this is definitely the easiest one to use. It definitely has the easiest workflow. And if you are a real estate agent that's going to be shooting smaller properties where the budget for expensive cameras or advanced software isn't really there, then this is definitely something to look at. Okay, so let's take a look at one of the more advanced virtual tour softwares. This is TourMake. This has been around for a while. I will admit I have never actually used this myself. However, I did um, sign up to a free trial just to check it out. It does seem to have a lot of options. There's a lot of different customization features um, and there's a lot of different scenarios which they have examples for, for Airbnbs, for restaurants, for real estate listings, hotels. So they seem to have a lot of bases covered. We can take a look at some examples and as you can see there's a lot of customization with um, your own logos and stuff like that. Now what I don't like is this kind of jumpiness which uh, where you just jump in between each image. It's kind of jarring, it's not smooth, it doesn't really feel like you're kind of walking through it like you would naturally and I think it's a little bit off-putting. But like I said the customization is there, you can add photos, you can add different uh, more information, you can add links into the images and there seems to be a lot of link up with Google Maps. You can automatically add these to Google Street View once you create them. Let's just take a look at the screen where you can create your um, your VR tour. So this is where actually I kind of lost it with tour make. It doesn't seem to be the most intuitive system. First you need to make a view make which is basically a I guess where you upload the photos and this is where you can also connect it to Google Street View. So I just uploaded a basic one here and I kind of just found it a bit difficult to to use really to work out how to link them together to work out how to get the geolocation right. I mean these arrows are not pointing in the right direction. I can't seem to be able to change them. You can see, see here the link up with Google Maps. So this is uh, quite handy really showing you exactly where the, the uh, location of each, each image is. But yeah, it, these arrows should be pointing a different way and there's literally nowhere to just drag and drop. I wish you could just do that. And to link them, you have to do that manually by clicking on each image, working out which one of these is the next image. And then, um, yeah, then just clicking this button. But for this view make, it's quite basic. You can't really do anything else. You can't add any of more customization. What you have to do is once you've done that, once you've made the view make, you then go on to, then you go on to this, which is view make, um, create new. And apparently I can't actually do it because there is no free trial for this. You need to pay to activate this view make. I don't know, like it, it just seems a little bit complicated. Um, yeah, so there's no actual way of trying out all of the features from what I can tell. I mean, I've just been playing around with it for a while. Even on their website, the examples that they show don't really seem to showcase all of the options. Like this is one of the examples they have and I don't see any of the customization options or any of the links that they have in the uh, in their kind of introduction. So I'm just wondering how easy it is to use, how many people are using it and if these features are actually available. So this is how much it costs. It costs $89 a year for the basic. I think if you wanted to use, uh, use this professionally, you'd have to go for the pro version at least. It's not ridiculously expensive. It seems to have a lot of features that would make your virtual tours quite dynamic. But the workflow seems to be a little bit convoluted, a little bit complicated. I can't really see how all of these features are being used or where they are. So if you want something that's integrated with Google, then uh, that this could be something that will be good for you. But it's not the easiest thing to use. I've certainly used virtual tour softwares that are much more intuitive. 
Okay, next up, let's check out Matterport. I'm sure if you've done any kind of research into VRTOR software, you will have come across Matterport. It's definitely one of the most popular options for all kinds of VR tours, which is actually a good thing because Matterport is a really established company. It's a really established service, so there is not much chance of them disappearing and you losing all of your stuff like has happened with some other VRTOR software providers. Now, Matterport, what makes it uh, unique or what used to make it unique is this dollhouse effect, which I'm sure you've seen here in this example. The software basically scans the room that you are in and allow and, and joins it all together to create this dollhouse effect, um, which does look quite cool, I will admit. It was something that was quite unique to this platform, but, but other software providers do have a similar thing now, so this is not something just unique to Matterport anymore. Matterport used to require that you use their extremely expensive cameras to scan the room, and these cost about $2,000, even more, and this provides the best kind of 3D scanning capabilities to create that dollhouse effect. So if you want the absolute best quality, you would need to use one of these um, very high precision, expensive cameras, which kind of limits the use of this software to very high budget VR tours, but now you can use the all-in-one 360 cameras like the Ricoh Theta Z1 or the Insta360 cameras, but the quality will be lower and the accuracy of those 3D scans will also be lower. Let's take a look at what you can do with Matterport, how you can edit your VR tours. One of the issues with Matterport is that you have to upload your images while you're on the site. So while you're shooting the photos, you need to connect to the service and upload them straight away, which means you can't shoot your photos, edit them, adjust them, and then upload via desktop. It doesn't have that option. And I think that is really something that limits this service and which is why I can't upload my own stuff right now because I've not been able to go anywhere for a few months due to, um, well, we all know why, but yeah, so I'm using their example option of this giant house. And as you can see, it's really smooth uh, to flow through. And this is part of the 3D scanning software that they have. This is a really realistic way of walking through a VR tour. It, it basically mimics how you would walk in real life. And I think it's one of the best features of this service. Now this VR tour is using their 3D cameras, so this is gonna be the best kind of quality they have. And as we can see here on the right hand side, this is all the options they have. So this is where you would add different kinds of tags, um, images, text, to be honest, Matterport is really limited as to what you can add in the VR tour. It's mostly all done automatically. There doesn't really seem to be a way to add images directly into the Matterport, um, the, the VR tour itself. You can only add links to them. So that is at least something. Um, but yeah, it really is quite limited even compared to the free software cooler. I think when I showed you that, you saw how many different options there were for customization, for different colors, for different icons. None of that you have in Matterport, which is quite surprising considering how expensive it is. It's certainly isn't cheap. And if I'm perfectly honest, in my personal opinion, this dollhouse effect isn't really that important. I mean, it looks cool and I guess you can kind of get a sense of scale in terms of how big each room is, but for the majority of people, I don't think it's gonna be worth it. It's certainly not worth it for smaller areas, small real estate tours or small buildings in any way. For this giant mansion, then yeah, I can understand it. But um, for most part, I just can't see it being worthwhile. So even the website doesn't seem to be letting me actually view how much it costs for the plan. It just links me to the cameras. So um, their website is not even working properly. So yeah, for something that is so well established and so advanced and uh, is quite expensive, I would expect more in terms of customization, but I can't deny the accuracy of the automatic VR tool creation and all of the smoothness of everything and the 3D effects you can get. It does look really good and I can see why a lot of people use it. Okay guys, so the next virtual tour software we're going to look at is called Meta Real Stage. This is another quite advanced version virtual tour software. It does have quite a steep learning curve. What makes MetaReal quite an advanced virtual tour software is that it has that same dollhouse effect as Matterport. However, unlike Matterport, you can create that manually when you upload your images. There's actually quite a big workflow you need to do to create this using MetaReal. So it's not for the faint-hearted. It will take you longer than most other, uh, most other virtual tour software. And once again, there's not a huge amount of customization available, but the main thing about about MetaReal is this dollhouse effect and how smooth all the transitions are. You get that kind of Matterport effect without having to use the really expensive cameras or having to have everything done on site. So let's just take a look at a virtual tour done with MetaReal. As you can see, these um, little hotspots here is what takes, takes us through the virtual tour and it's all really, really smooth. 
So yeah, we get the same smooth effect as we get with Matterport. So there is a alternative, um, just depending on what uh, what kind of workflow you're willing to do. Let's take a look at the price. Uh, as we can see here, there is a free version, but it is limited to just 15 panoramas per tour. But you do get unlimited virtual tours. Uh, but you know, it won't be. It, it will be branded with the Meta Real um, branding. So for a professional use, $9.95 per month or $39 per month. So really, that's not too bad. That is quite cheap, I think, for what you get. However, like I said, there is a steep learning curve. As you can see here, there's an option to pay Meta Real to create your virtual tours using your images um, rather than you do it. And I'm not surprised because I find it difficult. There is a lot to do. This is the dashboard for building a virtual tour. So the first thing you do is upload all of your images like that you see here, organize them um, into, into order group them into the rooms and then you go on to create your room. So let's just take a look at one, the dining room. Um, so you edit each room individually and the way they create this 3D effect is you literally have to kind of draw it onto the image. If we go here and turn on all of the visual guides, you can see here, this has all been drawn on, this is all measured, this allows the software to kind of work out what, uh, what's what, how to group all of these images together to create that dollhouse effect. So I had a go with it. Um, I didn't do very well on the first time. I'm not gonna spend a huge amount of time doing it, but yeah, it is definitely a higher learning curve. Things here like drawing the level line. So basically it's telling the software where the flat surfaces are, where the um, straight surfaces are. And uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it is quite a long process. But once you do it, I think the results are quite impressive. There are ways to add labels and um, information points and stuff like that. But as you can see, even in, the, in their examples, they don't really make much use of it. And there are very limited options. It's basically just a text um, a text box. There doesn't seem to be any way to add images that I can see, or it's, it's not really obvious to me straight away how to do that, or to add videos or links or stuff like that. So it is limited in that respect compared to what we've seen, but it's more about this uh, movement, this 3D effect, which is really cool. And for $9, or just over nine dollars I think it's a pretty good deal but the learning curve is very steep. Now I've already spoke about Cooler when I've talked about the free options I showed you what you could do with it in terms of all of the options available I think it's the best free option definitely if you just want to play around with creating virtual tours but the paid option the pro option just $12 a month is also a really good option if you want to get professional if you want to use this to create your virtual tours for clients uh, it definitely is good enough for that with the pro option you get the unlisted and private tours which is very important for clients and of and unbranded tours as well so you can put your own logos your own branding remove the cooler branding and you also get unlimited uploads so that makes cooler probably one of the best and easiest to use of the paid options and yeah so many people are using it this is a very well established brand i don't see them going anywhere anytime soon i like it and um so do these guys and most of you probably know who these are so yeah this is one of my preferred options definitely but again it is an online system so you do have that limitation of what you can do and always a risk that the company is going to disappear one day and you're going to lose your stuff you can't download it so yeah just bear that in mind Next onto Pano 2 VR. Now this is the first one in our list that is an offline system. It's like downloading Photoshop or Premiere Pro. It's a program in of itself. This has a lot of advanced options as well. For example, here you can uh, kind of take people on a predetermined path so they don't have to click anywhere or do anything and the tour just kind of does itself. It's also one of the few VR tour editors that can also work with video. So you can create 360 video tours as well. We can take a look at one of them here. So yeah, you get the idea. This is one of the few that can do that, but also their, uh, their normal virtual tours are also fairly decent. I mean, I think, again, there's a limit on the customization. Um, you can add images like that. I would prefer it if it had kind of pop-up images and more advanced animations on here and just larger icons. It does seem a little bit basic compared to the others. And the transitions seem a bit clunky as well. I'd prefer some smoother transitions. It doesn't have that 3D effect we see, the dollhouse effect we've seen with some other tour options. 
Here is the Pano2 VR software, and uh, this is what you do to create your virtual tour. This is what you use. And to be honest, I found it a little bit clunky and a little bit hard to grasp what you actually have to do to create it. I spent about half an hour to an hour just making this quick virtual tour. This is the first time I've used this, and um, I've just heard from other people that it can be quite decent. But yeah, to me, it does seem a bit dated. There are limited options. Um, most of the options are here. What you can do, adding different kind of things like um, a image, a video, a link to another or another area in your photo. The main advantage of this system is that it is all offline. So you don't have that worry that the, uh, the website's gonna disappear one day. You can download the VR tours to your desktop and save them there. So it's all offline. You don't need an internet connection. You could just start working straight away if you wanted to, if you are on site. So that is the main advantage of Pano2 VR, in my opinion. The software isn't too bad. I just find it a little bit clunky. I find it a little bit hard to follow and there are limited options for customization, for animations, for adding different things into the tour that make it more interesting than just a standard 360 tour. The final virtual tour software we're going to look at is actually the most expensive and the most advanced. It is 3D Vista. This is something that I would really only recommend for people who want a really, really advanced virtual tour with if you've got a high budget and you want something that's really going to stand out. Uh, actually, this software can not only create virtual tours, but it can create so many things from training scenarios, e-learning, um, live guided tours, you can connect as we can see here, video calls. So it is really advanced and there's so much you can do with it. So it's not necessarily just for virtual tours for real estate, you can work with video as well. It has a lot of options and a lot of stuff to get stuck into. As we can see here, these are all of the features. I'm not gonna be able to show you even a 10% of what this thing can do because it is so advanced. It is like the Photoshop or Premiere Pro of 360 media. We can take a look here at a really basic virtual tour created with this software. And as you can see, it's branded really well. It's really sleek. It looks really nice. All of the icons are very attractive and the movement between each image is really fluid and natural. But yeah, this is a very basic virtual tour for what this, um, what this software can do. Now this is something much more advanced used with 3D Vista. This is an e-learning course created with 3D Vista using 360 video. And this is something that is really amazing. I've not seen anything that can do this. Um, as you can see here, we're starting with a panorama and it's an e-learning course. You can quite easily create um, any kind of course that you wanted. I mean, this is obviously for a medical background, but it incorporates 360 video over your panoramas. You can answer questions. It's pretty crazy. I think this is so advanced and so cool. Um, but yeah, I've only barely scratch the surface of what this can do. This is the software in action. And like I say, this is an offline software, again, like, um, like Photoshop or something, you download it, install it into your desktop, and that's how you create your tours. So again, this is offline, you can store your virtual tours or your whatever you create on your desktop, it's not online. So that is another major plus. It has a lot of customization options, a lot of animation options. There are so many things you can add. These are all the kind of different icons you have available. Um, there's just so many different ones. Most of them are animated. You can add videos, you can add 360 videos, you can add photos, which for me is really important. I don't want my virtual tour to look exactly the same as everyone else's. I want that option to create something unique. So this is a very basic VR tour that I created with 3D Vista. And it is a very basic compared to what this, uh, what this software can do. As you can see, they put a lot of watermarks over it. This is because I just downloaded the free trial as obviously it costs $500, it isn't cheap. But to be honest, you can basically use all of the features to practice with and to create virtual tours. It's just if you want it without the watermark, you do need to pay. So it's good that they let you do that so you can practice with it. I love these smooth transitions. These these animations look really good. Obviously, there is so much we could add to this based on the other tours that, um, or the other features that I pointed out. Um, you can add images, you can add um, videos, you can add all sorts of stuff. Software is actually fairly intuitive. There's a lot of tutorials, but it is also the most expensive, so bear that in mind. So guys, that's pretty much it. That is all of the VR tour software that I have used or that I have researched in the past year or so. And this is a fairly up-to-date list. This is basically what we have available right now. This is not completely comprehensive. There are a few others out there, but I think this list basically gives us the best options, a wide price range, 
Pretty much all of these have the ability to be viewed on a VR headset. However, none of them actually have their own app on the Oculus Quest Store or any of the other VR tours. You do have to go manually into a website and look at them, but this is perfect for VR headsets as well if you wanted to use that with your clients that is something very new and very um, intuitive and it is a great way of showing people your virtual tours you are not going to tell you which one is best because it is completely dependent on what your needs are what your budget is and who you're making your vr tours for if you have any questions then feel free to comment below and i will try and answer them for you like i said i've used out of all of these i think i've used about um 70 percent of them there's only a few that i've just downloaded today otherwise i have used all of them at some point but yeah, that's it. I hope you found that useful. Okay, guys, that is it. I hope you enjoyed that overview of the VR tour software options that are available right now. I didn't go through every single one because there are so many out there now that it would just be a bit redundant. It would overload you with information. A lot of them basically do exactly the same thing. What I did is choose the best ones that have unique features and that are actually worth using and that are unlikely to close in the next you know year or so because that, like I mentioned in the video, is one problem. A couple couple of VR tour um, software providers just stopped stopped working, were abandoned, and then a lot of people lost their tours, lost, lost their content. So that is something to consider. So yeah, guys, feel free to ask me any questions about these VR tours. Um, subscribe if you're into this kind of content. I've got a lot more VR content um, uh, for VR headsets, virtual tours, 360 cameras, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, make sure you subscribe if you are interested. But until next time, guys, um, it's been a pleasure helping you out. I hope you found it helpful. I will see you around. Bye.